you know, I think that's important with nutrition though, is that it's ever evolving. It shouldn't really be uh, stagnant, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, what you guys talking about? Talking about you. Me? Mm-hmm. Talking about you and how much you love that D. <laughs> yeah, you missed the whole thing while you're at the, rat- the bathroom. But... Do- donuts? No. Detroit. No. Different. No. D12. It's a single <laughs> syllable. Uh, or it could be a... No. No, I don't really... Pl- ex- it's, it's a single syllable. I don't play type. darts... No, You're not those closer. darts. D I direction deciding things. You can get there. Oh, Andrew. dicks! Yes. <laughs> Why didn't somebody say something? Yeah, I would have been all over it. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Well, we're we're firing out a podcast here a little earlier than normal because. Uh, we're heading off to the Arnold Classic, and I'm um, super excited for that. We are going to be booth number. What's the booth, Andrew? Hurry up, hurry up. Nine, uh, uh, I think oh, it's 945. Oh, oh, oh. 945. <laughs> Andrew's making it up. Anyway, it doesn't really 945. matter. 945. Oh, 945. There we Told go. You. And Seema was on point. He knows what's going on. He knows where to be. Yeah. I'm just going to follow him. <laughs> he could be our bodyguard, Andrew. That works. Yeah, people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> I look like one. Yeah, yeah, see? You just need the earpiece. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get you a Bluetooth. <laughs> and some of those like really like you know, narrow sunglass shit. Yeah, yeah, they're super dark. You can't see through. Uh-huh. Yep. So you can look at chicks' butts. Nope, not going to be doing any of that. I stay eye level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's stages I'm over a there. faithful man. Yeah, but there's see-through pants out there nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't really, faithfulness doesn't really... <laughs> <laughs> doesn't doesn't really matter how, how powerful you think you are. <laughs> Those see through pants come your way, and it's game over. It's not going to be. It's not going to be easy. Anyway, we're super excited to get out to Arnold Classic. It's always great to get out to Columbus, Ohio. I lived there for a while. Trained at Westside Barbell, and that's where my son was born. And uh, even though it's going to be freezing cold, it's always great to get out and see the fans. And uh, my cousin is actually going. He's bringing. Um, I guess he's bringing his son, which I think is actually technically my second cousin, mm. but I always want to call him my nephew. He should really be like my second nephew, but mm. I don't think that exists. I don't know how it works either, but I always, for my cousins, I just say my nephews and nieces. Yeah, same thing. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Black people call everybody their cousin, don't they? Uh, actually, yeah, no. Well, <laughs> after, <laughs> oh yeah, there's cuz, but like uh, <laughs> in the African community, everyone's like my uncle and aunt, even if they're not related yeah. at all. Just my aunt and uncle and- yeah that's how they are same with mexicans and like uh at least these days now um like jasmine all our friends that's that's uncle mark yeah. that's that's uncle and Seema, and just like how is he my uncle don't <laughs> yeah. question anything like uncle right? and Seema looks a little different than yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you guys do that not really no, no. yeah no, i i mean so i guess sometimes i think with like some of our friends that we're really, really close with that we that we see a lot yeah you know then uh yeah like especially to the kids because the kids don't know who's who so it's easy to say uncle andrew it's just easier mm-hmm. like who's like who who is that to us you know it's just easier to say it almost yeah. that way rather than try to be like oh well he you know he's a podcast engineer or try mm-hmm. to explain like <laughs> all these other weird things but yeah i'm excited to uh to meet everybody and to uh hear all these stories uh something that we were just talking about i just got done with a workout i banged out some shoulders and some arms this morning and i was training with my friend sean uh, Sean owns a bunch of bunch of Dutch bros out here in uh, California. He owns a few in Woodland and a few here, in, or one in Davis, and he's opening up another one, I think, in Dixon, and uh, very successful in business, and he's also somebody that's done jiu-jitsu for years, so you guys got to got to shoot the shit a little bit about that. He wants to get back into, ju- into jiu-jitsu, um, but he's had some injuries. He's been banged up. He hasn't been as fit as he wants to be. And he feels like he's really not in good enough shape to even bother to try jujitsu again because he doesn't want to go back and um, have to really like baby step it. He wants to go back and be able to train pretty hard and, and to get build some consistency. Mm. And I think that whenever you're trying something, um, whenever you're trying something new or whenever you're going back to something, I think that that can be a little bit of a mistake to think that you all of a sudden out of nowhere have to go back to this like four day a week regimen. I think maybe that's a little too demanding on yourself. And I, I think in his case, 
I think the best thing to do would be just to go and, and just to like do that simultaneously as he's building up his fitness as well, because the jujitsu will build up his fitness tremendously. Yep. And he was mentioning like how he doesn't really stretch much and stuff. And my understanding, I don't have a great understanding of jujitsu, but uh, my understanding is like, you're going to get stretched <laughs> doing jujitsu anyway. Yeah. And so while it wouldn't be wise for him to all of a sudden out of nowhere to go in at a high level, uh, it would be wise for him to just go tell everybody, Hey man, like I'm, uh, not coming back from where I was. Like I, I need some like easy classes and I'm sure you can go to some intermediate and beginning classes. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the main thing is just to start, you know, and, um, Sean talked a lot today about control and how cool jujitsu is from that perspective. And we talk so much on this podcast. I think the last time we said, take a shot every time we say the word, <laughs> Um, but man, gaining control of stuff is really important. Your body is the only like vehicle that we have. It's kind of, it's really, it's really all you got. Right. And I think that we take it for granted. We don't always understand that that's, that's our product, you know? And you think about, um, this, this company, it's the way the slingshot was built, it was built with a product first and then everything else was second behind that. And, uh, it, you're, uh, 30, 26. Oh. You're 26. <laughs> so Encima was uh, comparing dick sizes a little bit with, uh, I think, Sean. Not not literally, but uh, he asked how old he was, which is kind of like a way of sizing somebody up in a way. And uh, I think sometimes we have a we have a, uh, sometimes we have this comparison thing that we do. We're like, how old is that guy? Because if I said he's 26, well, now you're in a lot of trouble, right? <laughs> but if yes. I said he's 35, or and you're like, okay, eight years, nine years. <laughs> You could, and especially you, you're a guy that likes to plan things out. You're like, I want to get my black belt in jujitsu in this amount of years, which is half the amount of years that most people want to are able to even obtain it in. Um, and so we have this kind of thing where we try to like measure up to what other people are doing sometimes. And uh, what I liked what you said is, is I like that you said that you think it's great that a lot of entrepreneurs are talking about fitness. A lot of entrepreneurs are talking about uh, regaining their health. Um, but also you were like, you know, I'm kind of glad that I started with this. I'm glad that I started with my body first. And I think that's an important thing for people to understand and for people to know. Yeah. Um, so the thing about Sean, like, uh, yeah, he's 35 and just a savage. He's got a lot of great things going on. He might even be a little bit younger. So I might yeah, be, he might say, <laughs> but you know. Uh, we were talking about this and like I was listening to the Sam Harris podcast. Sam Harris is a guy that's like, he's big into meditation and all that type of stuff. He's been on Rogan a bunch. And he had the CEO of Twitter on mm. and even the CEO of Twitter was like, yeah, I started paying attention to like my physical health more. That guy meditates a bunch, but uh, he's like, I just started paying attention to Twitter and being more cognizant of it and doing more things there. But it's like, first off, you're the CEO of Twitter and he is also the CEO of the Cash app, right? Um, and and you're you're just beginning to like, really focus on, like you mentioned, your body and your health. Uh, and, and like you also mentioned, that's the one vehicle that you have to move around. Like you can have everything else, but legit, if this is deteriorating, you're going to spend way less years on this planet. So like, you know, I, I find it, uh, it, it's alarming, but it's also like, I guess, like I said, it's, it's really good to see that, you know, we have a handle on this and we're really paying attention to this along with everything else because as long as, you know, as long as this body's functioning well, right, that's going to help every other thing that you do. Work, gym, everything else that you do is going to be much easier. Dealing with your family, even your your mood in terms of dealing with the mm -hmm. people in your life, you're just going to be much happier. Uh, it, 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 makes a, it makes a massive difference. So, I mean, you know, w another thing to think about is this. It's like, how long do you want to be going towards those big goals that you have, right? If you're not healthy, you're going to have a much shorter time, let's just say, to reach those goals. Or if your health isn't on the forefront of your of your focus, something might just hit you that you would have never expected that's going to stop you from getting there. Something health-wise, because you just weren't paying attention to it early on. Uh, so, Do, doing, doing things one time doesn't make you great, you know, and, and doing things even a couple of times doesn't make you great. What makes you great is when you have a track record. You have a track record of success. You have a track record uh, of of domination, like a like a Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
there's a lot of people that have, have hit game winning shots over the years. There's a lot of very, very talented football players and basketball players, but someone like Michael Jordan goes down in history as one of the all time greatest uh, American athletes ever. Obviously, he's highly talented with his athleticism, it was unbelievable, it was next level. He also worked very, very hard, but he also did it for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And then he was successful in like a bunch of different things. He was pretty damn successful in baseball even. And he was very, very successful in business. And it's easy just, it's easy to d dismiss some of that. It's easy just to say, oh, well, you know, he, you know, because he transcended basketball, of course he's good in business. Well, there's a lot of other people that do really well in basketball that have not done really well business-wise. Michael Jordan, uh, you know, has his own brand. I mean, he, like what he's done business-wise is insane. It might even equal what he did in his basketball career. I think his money that he was getting paid by the NBA, I think, paled in comparison to his uh, endorsement money from like by Nike far. and stuff. And then even when he retired, the money that he makes now has to be, and must must make a lot of the things that he did in the beginning sound almost like a joke. And so what makes somebody uh, great is the ability to be good for a really, really long time to develop some consistency with good habits. Um, to gain control over your life, to gain control over the things that you're trying to do. And when Michael Jordan was at his best, he actually even said he felt like he was a puppet master <laughs> when he was when he was on point. So yeah. he felt like he could literally control the guy that was trying to guard him. Think about how wild that is. You know, you talk about control in jujitsu, uh, get, get, gaining control, or in wrestling, gaining control of the person's like wrist and gaining, uh, you know, control in these certain positions and things like that to get your to get your leverage to gain a more favorable position somewhere else well, michael jordan you know thought that like he could control and almost move these guys like he was playing chess uh what a <laughs> what a crazy ability to be able to have but in order for any of those things to happen you have to be around for a long time so how do you be around for a long time well maybe michael jordan's main concern wasn't his uh CRP. It wasn't his uh, C-reactive protein. It wasn't his uh, red blood cell to white blood cell count. Like maybe that wasn't where his focus was. Maybe he wasn't worried about living to be 110, but maybe he understood that if I'm going to be in this game and if I'm going to be able to beat the Detroit Pistons, who used to routinely beat the shit out of him, literally, <laughs> and uh, he couldn't figure out how to beat them for a long time, he must have thought to himself at some point, maybe I should take better care of my body you know here's a high level athlete already in great shape already shredded to the bone already as athletic as could be but even he realized and understood hey you know what maybe i should take this like lifting thing to the next level maybe i should get a coach and that's when they started having i mean that changed strength coaches forever because then the bulls got a strength coach and then everybody else had a strength coach and now seriously yeah now there's strength coaches all over the world you know, getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to help these teams out. Um, that wasn't that wasn't the only place there were strength coaches, but Michael Jordan and, and the Chicago Bulls and stuff really, really put a lot of that stuff um, on the map. And the mental game of it, there's coaches, there's a guy, famous guy, he's written many books um, that has come from, uh, you know, training and coaching Michael Jordan to keep his mindset on that next level. But back to your point, back to what you said is, that you're going to have to be able to do this for a long time. So if he didn't do that lifting, maybe he would have never got past the Detroit Pistons. But even on top of that, maybe he would have got injured mm -hmm. to where he could never even express his true strength, never even express what his mindset was like. He can never even fully express his athleticism. And so as we're going towards these things, we need to understand that we can't just be like good in just a couple areas. We need to work on being good all around as much as we possibly can. And if Elon Musk was to come into super training gym, I'm sure we'd be blown away by his intelligence, right? We would talk to him, right? And we would, but what if we had him do walking lunges <laughs> or what if we had him do a squat? I mean, the, the conversation would change really fast. 
Be like, dude, remember when Elon Musk came in here and he tore his ACL trying to God. squat 135 yeah. and he just plummeted to the ground yeah. or or when he couldn't do one push up unbroken without, you know, doing a push up off his knees or something? Yeah. I, mean, or, I don't know if his fitness is that bad, but just, you know, just yeah. as an example. Or we would talk about like, dude, do you remember when we ordered lunch and the crap that he ordered? <laughs> oh, We'd be yeah. like, what the heck? Because that's something I remember like um, when uh, NBA players would get older they would like start kind of falling off and they'd be like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make a strong comeback. I'm going to pay attention to my diet, blah, blah, blah. And people would be like, what are you talking about? You're a professional athlete. How are you now just going to like, like there's, there's nowhere to go. And then it's like, well, no, because they, they don't actually pay attention to anything. They're just yeah. always have been super gifted, like, you know, athletically, but then they work hard in the gym. Look at Charles Barkley. <laughs> But then, like when it comes to the nutrition side of things, they just wouldn't care. And then once they got older, they're just like, oh, I have to pay attention to this now. Mm -hmm. And it's, I just remember being young, being like, how the heck are they not perfect all around? Yeah. You know, and it's just like, wow, it's, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. They're doing so much work all the time. So much just like create like multiple practices a day. Mm -hmm. They have nutritionists that handle their food. They're not thinking about any of that. They're yeah. really thinking about the court, you know, but the thing is, is like pertaining to the Jordan example, you don't have to. I mean, you know, you don't have to be some elite level athlete, you know, you can just go to the gym for 30 or 40 minutes a day and build that habit. And that'll make the, you're better than 90 something percent of the population yeah. if you're going to the gym for 30 minutes a day. Yeah. Right. So if you could just build that small habit sooner or later, you'll be improving. You'll, you'll start going 40 minutes, an hour, and mm -hmm. that'll just become a habit. And if you have that, that's such just a dangerous tool to have in your toolbox for your, your, just your overall quality of life yeah i remember when i when i worked in an office there was like a uh, a string of people's parents that were just getting sick and then my dad had open heart surgery and i remember i was freaking out and i was telling my boss like hey man i have to go now like this is what's happening and he just stopped and he was a bigger fella and he was like you know you going to the gym like all the time you bringing your lunch and eating right he's like you're never gonna have to go through this i was just like like, well, like it hit me pretty hard at that moment because I'm like, damn, like this is the scariest thing I've ever gone through and I'm not even going through it like physically. But when he said that, I was like, oh, I wasn't even considering that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you were just trying to do it to get bigger biceps, right? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to make <laughs> right. Stephanie, you know, excited. But. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, you know, that's important though too is that we have like these kind of side things that we're doing it for. Um I don't think a lot of people really care about their heart. It sounds crazy, mm -hmm. right? I don't think a lot of people, like, because- Look, how many people do we know that are taking pre-workout straight to the face? Like they're not even, they're not even mixing it with any water. They, right. they just take the powder like on their way to the gym and they do like a double or triple dose and the packaging clearly says on there, don't take <laughs> half, half a scoop, right? Not me, bro. <laughs> people are like redlining their heart, you know, uh, on, the, on the way to the gym uh -huh. to try to, uh, to try to get in a, a good workout. And I think that that's like. Because we're trying to think about the muscles. We're trying to think about, I want to look like Stan Efferding. I want to look like the next Jay Cutler. Um, I want to be able to lift like uh, some of these savage power lifters that I see on Instagram. And so they're thinking, I'm just going to do what I need to right now to make that happen. But they're not thinking about the long game. They're not thinking about, what if I... What if I just rolled out over the, over the course of the next five years? What would it look like? Sounds really boring. But what if I was just to roll out a ton of sevens and eights for workouts? But, but do them all the time. You know, do them four or five days a week. And uh, what if my diet was on point, like a seven or an eight? Um, and what if, um, what if my sleep was always a seven or an eight, right? You start to add up these things. And, and you're probably wondering, like, oh, why isn't Mark Bell talking about a 10 or being at 100%? Well, because sometimes being at a hundred percent is not rational mm -hmm. and sometimes being at a hundred percent, uh, you have jujitsu, you have your lifting, you have your nutrition, you have your girlfriend, you have your work. Uh, if you're pouring tens into everything else, maybe your girlfriend's like, Hey, like, see you later, dude. <laughs> right. Yeah. And now what happens to your workouts? What happens to your jujitsu? What ha everything else gets jacked up because mm -hmm. you don't, your social life, your love life is screwed up. And so... I think that it would be maybe maybe somebody like a Charles Barkley and say maybe, maybe a Shaquille O'Neal, right? These guys obviously they've they've worked very very hard, but they they were given a talent uh, that was so c crystal clear. I mean, Shaquille O'Neal is a great example. He's just massive. He's just massive. Like, how could the guy not do something, right? Obviously, there are tons of talent. I don't want to take away. 
uh, credit from him. He was he an outstanding, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Um, but it's, it's so clear on what he was gifted. I think we can all recognize and we can all say that we all have gifts inside of us, but most of us are going to have to be working pretty damn hard for a very, very long time. And most of us are going to have to be like really focused in and, and striving for these things in order for us to really get anywhere because we don't have this natural talent that's uh, just so damn obvious. I think Shaq, though, it's it's great that you brought up Shaq because he's one of those individuals that you see like, okay, yeah, he was like a, a 10 in basketball. Talent, physicality, just dominance, size, everything. But then I think he ended up getting like two degrees. Like he got a degree while he was playing and then he ended up getting another degree after. He ended up becoming a sh not a sh was he, did he well, now a sheriff or something too yeah, like, yeah yeah he was like yeah ma yeah sheriff or deputy or he got deputized of yeah. some, he like re arrested somebody or something <laughs> i don't know something strange happened yeah we should oh, we should I'll, we should look it up i'll look it up but was he the one that they like raided someone's like trailer or house and it was the wrong person mm -hmm. or is that somebody else i'm not sure, I, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll look it up right now <laughs> but, but like he and, and, and but, now he's killing it in business he's one of the most successful it. uh uh He's one of the most successful, uh, what do I say, athletes exactly uh, in the history. You know, I, you got like Magic Johnson. I think might be ahead of him, and like that's, I think that's about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's a sheriff's deputy in Clayton County. Yeah, wherever that is. It, it's it's crazy to see someone who already has so much success takes on the takes on doing all these other things and trying to do them at a very high level. Like he doesn't stop. A lot of times you'll see these high level athletes when they're done you don't hear about them a lot you know kobe too kobe i think he's now um his next passion is like writing stories so he has a oh, podcast yeah. for yeah he has that podcast for kids right to try and um hmm. he like, had a kid's book i think come out and a kid's there. book too and it's just like that's cool <laughs> that that's wow. like wow shack is so out of proportion yeah <laughs> it's just insane look how tall that guy is yeah but it's just a, a testament to trying to continually challenge yourself with with new things you know, trying to put yourself in situations where like, uh, you, you're not the best, you know what I mean? You, you don't know what's going on, but you can actually learn something new. I think, uh, even, even I was falling short of that for a while when I wasn't, you know, I was just sticking to lifting and sticking to the things I knew it, it's, it's difficult to get out of that and put yourself in situations to really, to really just be at the bottom. Obviously, that's, that's a great thing. Obviously you want to always do the best you can at everything, right? But like what happens to you personally when you're trying to be, you're thinking to yourself like on your way here, you think I'm going to best workout <laughs> possible. I'm going to, I'm going to be a 10. Like maybe when you're younger, maybe you did some of that stuff just because you were so excited about it. Um, what happens to you personally, maybe when you're like almost trying too hard? Almost trying too hard. I think the, the difference in my approach to working out now is gauging the day. You know, uh, gauging how I feel when I come into the gym, and, and not and when I say gauging how I feel, if I'm like not in a great mood, I'm not going to use that and be like, okay, my my workout's going to be shitty or something. I'm going to warm up. I'm going to get under the bar, do what I need to do, and depending on like how my body feels, I know days that I can really push it, and then I know days where okay, today's one of those days where I'm going to back off. I'm still going to get a good workout, but I'm going to work within what I've got. Yesterday's a great example. I came to the gym. Um, and I was deadlifting and I was just like, I was just feeling good. I was feeling snappy. I was doing box jumps between like my deadlifts and stuff. And I was just like, yeah, today we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to test something out. And then I ended up pulling 725 and it was, it was easy, Mark. Like it was That's no, awesome. It was, I didn't see that. I need yeah, to check that out. It was no, like literally it came off the ground. There was no hitch. It was easy. So I know that. Like at this point, my deadlift is probably stronger than it's been in the past. Like I, I can pull more than <laughs> I have great, before, right? <laughs> which is great. But that's the thing. Like, like between my sets, I was dancing to the music and shit. Like that. That was just one of those days where I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my foot on the gas and I'm gonna make something happen today. But on other days, like I, in the past, I used to try and try and push it every single day. And I feel like it's good to have that mindset. But it's also good no, to yeah, like you're just annihilating these weights. It's yeah, great. It, it's also good to like really be able to be like, okay, today's not one of those days, but I'm going to go for that. Maybe in my next workout where I'm feeling a little bit better. I think you, you you gain that with like experience and more maturity with whatever it is that you're doing. But yeah, like I was I was excited about this because I was like, wow, things are just flying. This is yeah, that's 725 right there. I was like, this is easy. It was kind of scary. 
Dang. But uh, yeah. Oh wow. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it was a good. You day almost killed yourself with the <laughs> celebration. <laughs> hey, hey, be careful. Yeah. But I don't fall into that habit anymore. Like even when I know I'm having a rough day at jujitsu, like there's some days where I'm just on point, like everything's on point. And then there are other days where I'm just, things aren't mo- things aren't going the way they, they need to go. And I just like let it happen. I deal with it and uh, I just go in and try again the next day. I really like the idea of, um, it's this is a hard one for people to swallow and people that are young, they won't be able to handle this in any way whatsoever, but a good way to look at thing is, things is that you shouldn't really be trying to do anything. Um, you're just one of many, many things in the world that are being done. You know, you're not, you don't have to go out of your way to like really try to do, like I don't have to come in and try to impress you. I don't have to try to be like your friend. If I just, if I just be, if I just am, then, uh, and I'm good and I'm nice and I'm kind, then we'll just be friends. I don't have to really like, go out of my way to like do anything crazy or special. Um, this is from, uh, 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 Mr. Rogers. I, I saw the documentary on, on Mr. Rogers and he said, uh, you know, you don't have to, and this is a message to kids, but this is a message to adults too. Like you don't have to do anything spectacular to be loved by people. You know, I, and I think that we always think that we do. Mm-hmm. We always think that, you know, winning this tournament or, or, or winning a power of thing meter, benching this 500 pounds at 220 we always think it's going to give us this like extra thing and it's really not gonna it's nice to have goals it's important to have goals as i mentioned earlier it's important to have these these kind of things that are um motivations that are kind of on the side you know andrew was you know trying to get bigger guns trying to get bigger shoulders trying to excite his wife (laughs) (laughs) and uh meanwhile he didn't really maybe recognize like Oh, this could be like healthy for my heart, right? So it's, yeah. while we're going towards these goals, we're going to pick up a lot of other great things. A lot of other healthy habits are going to uh, come along for the ride. But I think if you can kind of, it's hard to tell people to relax when they're not a relaxed person. Uh, they might kind of just say like, easy for you to say, dude, <laughs> you know? Um, and in the position I'm in nowadays, people might think that, but I'm not relaxed at all either. I'm trying to, I'm always trying to do better. I'm always trying to make things better. But, you know, in, in this quest and, and as I move along, I, I have kind of recognized that, you know, I'm just one of many millions of things going on in the universe that's, that's being done. And if I kind of look at things that way, not, not as if I don't have any control over anything. Mm-hmm. I certainly do. I got control over my feelings, who I hang out with and what I do. Um, but I don't have to try so hard. Yeah. I have a question for you because I was thinking about this earlier and this ties in with what you were saying. But... As you personally are like, you know, heading towards that, that 500 pound bench or when you were much heavier and you're heading down in terms of weight, you were still, and you are still like, I'm not going to say content with where you are right now or content with what you're doing, but you are, you're okay with it, right? Like you do want to get better, better, but you're still like, okay and happy with where you are. Am I right? Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I don't have a problem with the word content. Um, I think sometimes people look at the word content as being negative. And I think sometimes people look at the word competitive as being such a positive, but I think competition being competitive can sometimes be like a negative. Mm, um, as, as we were talking about like Shaq, right now, while it looked like Shaq was, uh, you know, throwing out all these tens all the times in terms of like effort and stuff. Uh, we probably still never really saw like what a 10 looks like from Shaquille O'Neal, you know, or even Michael Jordan, even though they were so passionate and stuff. Again, as I mentioned earlier, um, if you're a 10 in too many different spots, and I'm sure they were all 10s um, and they were all, you know, putting in the absolute best effort for periods of time, but you can't do it for that long. And so like uh, with, with yourself, with your diet right now, it sounds like you're probably like at like a nine or a 10. And it sounds like with your jujitsu, you're at like a nine or a 10. And with your lifting, your lifting, your lifting's coming, coming back. Right. But it's probably at like a seven or eight seven. overall compared because you got the, the bench press and squat, uh, is probably not maybe where it was before. Um, 
and you have to make room for things socially. You have to make room for friends. You got to make room for family. You got to make room for to be able to do your other job uh, the right way and everything. So um, while it kind of seems like we we saw all the, we saw like uh, Shaquille O'Neal and some of these other people, you know, performing at these perfect levels all the time, mm-hmm. uh, they certainly weren't at perfect levels. It's just that what they did was so spectacular, just because they're so talented. And yes, they are working hard for it too. Uh, but the point is, is like their eight looks like a 12 compared to somebody else. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's also because they're just so good at their craft. It, you know, it's funny because like, you wonder, you hear stories about Michael before big games. <laughs> Some of his teammates would be like he was smoking cigars and maybe he was at a casino or something like right before or the day before. And you wonder, okay, what if he wasn't? But he still outperforms everybody. Or Shaq, like when he put on all that weight and he got massive. <laughs> You wonder what if he stayed in shape for his whole career? How even how much more dominant would he be? Um, but, but maybe he needed that. Like maybe, maybe those guys need needed that. that. Like they needed to be like a little bit laxed, and maybe they just needed people to think about them differently too. Maybe mm. they just needed people to stop to shut up and stop talking about them being perfect for five seconds. Like maybe they just they needed a little bit of that uh, adversity. Like we we all need. Uh, there's you know some good and bad to everything. There's some good and evil to everything, and, and sometimes you. You know, when a lot of things are going really good, you see people like kind of mess up. It's because like human beings need conflict. Mm-hmm. It's like John Jones, right? Like, uh, yeah, when, when yeah, he, there you go. Great he just example. like wasn't training, Perfect. he was partying, and then he was kicking everyone's ass. And then now it's like uh, he tried to clean it up, and he just it's not the same. So it's like, man, turn back to the heel, like just keep partying and keep <laughs> kicking people's ass. <laughs> John Jones is a crazy example of that. It's it's he's he's one of those. I really love him as an athlete. You know, but it's hard to be like in the back of your head as a spectator, just like, what if everything was cleaned up? What if Mm -hmm. he was on point all the time? But like you said, you can't always be at a 10, you know, maybe like exactly for him doing other things at a seven or an eight is allowing him to continue to kick ass at a 10 on the end. Mm -hmm. Or uh, yeah, or Chuck Liddell um, falling asleep before a match. You know, it's like imagine if he took it like real serious and he was like, you know, going through scenarios in his head or something. Yeah. It's like, who knows what else he could have been too, you know, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, then he wouldn't have been the ice man. Yeah. He might've been a different person. And you, you mentioned, uh, content, you know, being, being happy. You know, I, I am, I am very happy. I'm, I'm very like, uh, uh, satisfied and excited about like with where things are. And I'm very excited about like where things are going. Um, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. I feel like, uh. I'm, you know, I, I'm as strong as I'd like to be, you know, I, I'm, I'm always trying to get stronger. I'm always trying to get like leaner, but I realize that, you know, I, I can't do everything all at one time. You know, that, that's the way training works. You mentioned, uh, how you kind of like let that, that day came to you. You weren't like, uh, oh man, if I do this 725 deadlift, it's going to be sick for Instagram. <laughs> I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't even <laughs> aiming for that yesterday. No. You're just feeling good. And you were like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll try something heavy. But you had no idea where you were going to like really land. You weren't really 100% sure. And as you started to get closer and closer to it, you took what the day uh, had in store for you rather than, um, and you kind of like, I mean, it's a weird way to look at it, but you kind of think like it was already there. It already happened in some way. Like it, the day is going to go the way that it's uh, supposed to go, you know, especially when you're working hard and doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. Um, so it's just... I think people have a hard time understanding like uh, being content with something. And that's why we see in the fitness industry, we see people fluctuate so much. You know, they get done with a bodybuilding show and then they're like way, way out of shape. And, or they've done a power of meet and they were extremely strong and then uh, their, their strength isn't there anymore. And I think it has to, I think people, their um, mindset comes and goes so quickly with a lot of that. And it's a real... Um, to try to be on point for a bodybuilding show does take like a 10. It takes at least a 9.5 or so to get on stage and to look the right way. And so we all understand that we could do that for several weeks. We can do that for many, many weeks, maybe, maybe even if we're really, really uh, good at it, maybe 12 weeks, maybe 16 weeks, but that's about all the time you got, you know, you're not going to be able to really do it for much longer than that. But then the question is, and then what? You know, so you want to start a business or you want to open up a gym, uh, you want to start a, uh, online training business or whatever it is that you want to do. The next question after that has to be, and then what, 
you know, you want to start this thing. Okay, that's really cool. And you put a lot of work and you put a lot of time into it. But now you just got started. And now you're actually really screwed. Mm -hmm. So, and then what? What are you going to do now? I remember Bradley Martin was talking to me uh, a few years ago when he was going to open up Zoo Culture. And he said, man, I am so excited for this. And it was like opening the next day. He's like, I can't, I can't wait to open this gym up. And he spent, you know, two years on, you know, getting the property and getting the equipment and everything's all set now. And I said, I said, and now the hard work's going to begin. Like your warm up's over with, you know, now, now you're just getting started. It's like going to the gym and getting your workout or your warm up done. It's like you got yourself there. You went through all this trouble. You got yourself in the right clothes and the right frame of mind and you did everything the right way. Okay. Well, now the hard shit's going to happen. Yeah. And I remember his like long silence and deep sighs. Like, <sighs> and you're like, yep. And he's like, all right, man, I got to go. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> There's this, uh, like, for example, with uh, Bradley's, with the gym, you know, when he was going through that whole process and probably throughout his whole career, because he's obviously massive right now. Um, the, if you look at Bradley like five or seven years ago, I mean, or even anybody, I think, anybody super successful in your, like, in your place, I was thinking about this the other day and it's the idea of like being like present in that moment and like, yeah, you have these big goals or whatever, but I, I feel like it's, it's hard for a lot of people to not be negative with their current position versus their goal. For example, if you're trying to lose a lot of weight and you, you are overweight right now, I feel like you, it, it's, it's easy to, have a lot of negative self-talk with where you are and be super negative with where you are currently. But I think more so the better thing to do is to be present with yourself, be content, but also have this, have this drive to continue to try and improve. And I think it's hard because it's like, for example, where I am right now, I'm perfectly happy with where I am in my life right now. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about where I am right now. I was excited where I was years ago, but that I'm still super excited and super driven for where I want to go. And I, and it's, it's, it's hard to explain having both of these things. Like, yeah, like I want to improve and I absolutely want to improve, but that doesn't mean that I'm not totally okay with this person right now. So if you're like overweight, it's hard to say, but you should be okay with yourself and you should also be super driven and super excited for all the improvement you have to come you know it, it, it's hard though because people in that position a lot of people generally like talk down on themselves and they're extremely negative with themselves and they get depressed with where they are and i don't know if i can necessarily like say you should be okay with yourself but you should also be and you should be okay and you should also not be okay because you need something to drive you in the right direction. You know, it's just hard because so many people fall off of that trail because they begin getting negative and that negativity just makes them quit or stop. But it's, it's a hard thing to explain to, to, to have both sides of that coin. Do you get what I'm going at here? Or am I, are my too abstract? No, I totally understand <laughs> what you're saying. Uh, I think, you know, one way to look at it too is like the negative can become the positive. You know, so like in school, like I always thought I was dumb. Turns out I was just happened to be a little slower than everybody. And turns out being slow ended up being a strength for me. It turns out that, uh, you know, like that uh, taking my time with things ended up being a huge uh, blessing and ended up being something that has helped me persevere. I've always known like, all right, well, this just takes you longer. So <laughs> here we go. Uh, this might take uh, five days or five weeks or five years or 20 years, this might take some time. This might take a while. I still feel like I'm growing extremely slowly. Um, everything's been a real slow crawl. There's never been one thing that's happened where it's been like, boom, the company exploded or I went viral on something. Uh, there's nothing's ever happened like that, uh, mm -hmm. that I can really recall. It's all been, it's all been very slow. I mean, I think even the, uh, even the definition of power, I think is, <laughs> is uh, work over time. <laughs> and yeah. so like that's, you know, I pow I've power lifted my whole life, power lifted everything, um, not just in the gym. And so 
the things that you're faced with that are a negative to you that you're down about, you know, I always say never kick a downed opponent. Now, maybe you should bring yourself to your knees and maybe you should hit yourself a little bit to uh, knock some sense in yourself and say, look, man, this is unacceptable. Where you're at right now, the fact that you're drinking, uh, you know, five nights a week and the fact that you're, you know, not taking responsibility for your kids and you're fat and that's okay. That's okay to, that's okay to, you know, okay. You're, you're realizing you're, you're coming, you're having like an awakening and you're saying, this is, this standard that I have for myself is crap. This is not good. I need to have a higher standard for myself and I'm going to start doing that now. But once you make that decision to start doing that, that's when you have to be careful to, to not beat yourself up anymore. You get to the gym and uh, you're, you're way out of shape for, for where you want to be. And that's not the time to, that's the time to say, hey, you know what? You made it here. And this workout's going to be hard, but we're going to get through it. And uh, hopefully each time I come back, I can be a little bit better than I was last time. And that's all we're trying to do. Um, I, I often say, you know, just try to be a little bit better than you were yesterday. That might even be too hard. Like that might, being better every day, like that's kind of overwhelming. Uh, but just work on being better, period. Work on uh, like just doing your best, being your best. Again, it doesn't have to be spectacular, but it has to be consistent. You don't have to be fancy. You have to be consistent. So what are some things that can help you to be consistent? What are, what are the things that are in your way right now? What's, blo what's blocking you? Is it, is it the negative self-talk? Um, do, do you live on the East Coast and you don't uh, want to wake up in the morning and, and go to the gym early because it's really, really cold? Well, what are some things that you can do? What are some things you can do to, to, to make this more pleasant? Can you, um, you know, maybe go to bed like my, my cousin does this. She goes to bed in her workout clothes. <laughs> probably kind of frustrating for her husband, but she goes to bed in her workout clothes because she knows that when she gets out from those covers uh, in the morning, that it, it's going to be cold. She's going to think about how cold it is outside and she's going to want to snuggle back into that blanket and get into that little pot, that little warm pocket that we all, that we all love to snuggle underneath. Right. Yeah. And she's going to want to just, you know, call it in and say like, I'm not going to the gym. Yeah. But she's, she's, you take down these like barriers. What, what are these things that are in your way? How, how do you make something a little bit easier for yourself? Do you need to prepare your meals? Do you need to figure out ways of being ahead? Do you need to lay out your clothes the day before? Like what's frustrating? What's bothering you? What's in your way? If I, if I asked you right now and said, you know, what's blocking you from becoming a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, you would rattle off the three things that are either like in your way or just time restricted or, but you, anyway, you would rattle off the, the three things that are in your way. And I would say, that's great. And Seema, you should do that. Like yeah. you actually already know. Yeah. And so if you got yourself to the gym, that's, that's no longer the time to continue to beat yourself down. It's good that you came to this realization that you're fat and out of shape, but now it's time to give yourself you know, try to break down as many barriers that prevent you from being consistent as you possibly can. So that way you can continue to move forward. Habits are powerful. That that's the exact thing you're talking about right there. Just, just figuring out the, the negative habits that you have that are, that are getting in your way, like going to sleep too late each night, go to sleep a little bit earlier. Uh, that's the same thing like when I had to do that with jujitsu. I had to figure out exactly what I could do to be able to get better as fast as possible. And the habits were certain things I would do that would stop me from going to class on certain days. And I just figured out exactly what I had to do so I could get there as much as possible. So it's it's really that simple. But I, the, the barrier also is it's, it's really difficult to look at all of your, I guess, all the things you do each day like right in the eye and say, okay, I should, probably shouldn't be doing this. That's that, that first step is actually the hardest, you know, looking at all of the negative habits you have and trying to pinpoint which ones are the keystone habits that would, you know, make the biggest changes. Um, keystone habits are like habits where like, it's that one big thing that if that one thing were shifted, so many other things would fall into place, you know, 
a keystone habit for for me for the longest time was getting enough sleep because I used to when I was younger I used to get like five or six hours. I changed that keystone habit, making sure I got to sleep a little bit earlier, like making myself get eight hours a night, and literally everything from work, like control of food, um, energy in the gym. But you're losing three everything. hours every day. <laughs> But everything else is so heightened, like mm -hmm. my focus, my clarity. I'm not in a constant I'll have time drudge. to sleep, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll but, sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, exactly. No, but that's the thing. Like, if you can just start with one big habit that you can make a shift, so many other things can make a shift in your life. It's, it's I crazy. think there's a lot of deception. You know, there's a lot of just things deceiving us. We think that that candy, or we think that that uh, those French fries, or we think that these things are going to be great. Like, this is going to be, this is going to be so good. Like, oh man. And sometimes, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's a nice relief and a nice break from the monotony of all the other shit that we're trying to do all the time. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it's deceiving. I think Instagram is, it falls in that category. Social media falls in that category. Oh, I'm just going to lay down and, you know, before I go to bed, I'm just going to, I'm going to catch up on the day. Horrible idea. Probably <laughs> the worst idea you ever had in your entire life because you're going to be on there for way too long. And it's not always about, I, I do think that social media can be productive. I do think that having knowledge of what other people are doing in the world is not necessarily a negative thing. Um, it can be though. And I think that if we spend too much time on it, it can be highly, highly dangerous. So I think that you would be better off saying, you know what, I'm going to do this in the other room and I'm going to set my timer on my phone or I'm going to look at the screen time on my phone and I'm going to adhere to this. I do want to check social media. I don't want to be so damn rigid in my life. I do want to kind of check some of these things out. I do want to see what these guys and girls are up to, but I'm going to do it for this amount of time because that's actually reasonable. And I got other goals. And and in, and Instagram uh, doesn't really fall into, you know, me obtaining some and achieving some of these other goals. Maybe you have a goal on Instagram, which is fine. <laughs> uh, it's you're going to have goals everywhere in your life, you know. Uh, I, at some point, want to have a million followers just because, like, and I'm not even at half a million. So you're going to have, you're going to have these goals that you, that you want that might sidetrack you, might deceive you from the real goals that you're actually really trying to get. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important <clears throat> to understand what is this actually doing for me? Is this break from my diet for the day? Is this going to help? Is this truly going to help me be on point with my diet for the next three months? Or am I going to? mess up today and then you know be back off track mm -hmm. tomorrow and then the weekend because it's so-and-so's birthday and then the holidays are coming and so on yeah and what you know and Simo was talking about the um setting the uh what keystone habit yeah <clears throat> i think people uh understanding how bad habits can compound on each other you know so like mark just said like you know, having this piece of candy it's it's just one candy it's not going to kill anybody it's very true um but then that could lead to maybe just a sugar rush and now you're going to bed two hours later than you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And now that two hours, you know, it's just going to keep rolling on to each other. And, uh, and also the, the negative self-talk, you know, I think that's, that's so powerful. It's so much bigger than people even, you know, can comprehend, you know, cause I, I don't think we actually do know to what extent it does go to yeah. because of like how, you know, we all talk about like how positive talk when we're going to the gym and, you know, we imagine the lift happening and, Oh, look, it happened. Um, when it's negative, I think it's so much worse. You know, I'll never be like this Instagram model or whatever, or uh, so and so already lost ten pounds, and I've been doing the diet for twice as long, and I haven't lost half as much. You mm -hmm. know, and it's, it's you know again that's kind of more comparison. But as far as like the the negative, you know, aspects of all that, it, it's it's so much worse than you know, it's like double, <laughs> two steps back as far as like. Um, you know, something being positive is like one step forward. Well, yeah. the second you think of it negatively, it's like you're way back here now. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think understanding how bad habits can compound on each other is almost more important than the good habits being set. Yeah. Because how easy is it for you to talk bad about yourself? It's way easy. So, I, yeah, I don't, I don't like when I hear that all the time and I'm just like, no, you don't understand. You're, you're really hurting yourself right now. Yeah. It's tough. That That's one thing I've never allowed myself to do. That's or I, I've just... I guess I've tried to avoid it whenever like whenever I do find that I'm going into that negativity I try and force myself out of it because it's it, it can be a it could be a spiral downward mm -hmm. it could be a big spiral downward but I know this is off topic but I think uh people will probably get 
some use out of this. You're talking about um, probably not. Yeah, no, probably <laughs> because you use social media for everything, right? For it's like it, it, mm -hmm. it, it bolsters what you do, but for yourself, what have like what negatives did you notice personally that it may have been having on you, and what did you specifically do to, I guess, counteract that? Um. So I think that, um, you know, social media can just be a large distraction. Mm -hmm. And I think that you can end up in a position where you end up really comparing yourself to a lot of other people and it's on a massive level and it's, and it's just, it's, uh, this is, this is what it does to me. And, and it, and it floods me with anxiety towards like, maybe I should be doing that. Oh my God. Like in SEMA deadlifts at 725, I need to get my deadlift up. Oh my God. Like, look how good shape Michael Hearn is. Holy shit. I need to get ripped. And then, oh my God, Bradley Martin's doing this crazy thing over here. And this person's doing that. And this person's doing this. And then it like, it just like, it makes you feel like everything that you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. That you're not doing one, you're not doing one thing right. And it's, uh, it can like take your breath away almost. And for me, like I, I do feel good about myself. So luckily I haven't gotten, uh, like sucker punched by that too much because I always got my hands up and I, I feel good about where I'm at in my life. But at the same time, I can see how it can really just flatten other people. I could see how it could be something that can even cause like suicidal thoughts in other people because they're like, man, what what am I even doing here? Look at how, look at how impressive all these people are. Cause we're seeing snapshots and highlights of everybody's life. Right. And so I think that that could be the negative side of it. Obviously the positive side of it is, um, you get to share your story. You get to share a message. Uh, for me, I get to impact fans, which is really cool. I get to share information with them that can potentially help change their lives for the better, which how amazing and how cool is that? You get to network with people from all over the world. There's no longer seven degrees of separation. There's like one just hopping on the internet, right? And getting on some form of social media and you can uh, end up making contact with who knows the rock, Gary V like people. I see Gary V interacting with fans. I see the rock interacting with fans mm -hmm. who knows who you can interact with uh, via the internet. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the way that I have, um, the way that I've tried to police some of this in my life has been to really only like make posts and then like walk away. Um, almost like, uh, like I'm going to report on some news. I'm going to report on like what I'm doing. Um, but just like the news, there's no interaction back. You know, the news floods out all this <laughs> all this information to you. Most of it's usually pretty negative, but the news floods out all this information and they get absolutely no feedback. I'm sure they get calls and emails, but I'm sure they ignore probably all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the way I was kind of looking at it for a while. Like I'll just kind of like broadcast this out, but just like a uh, old radio show or old TV show, they're, they're not getting feedback. It's not a uh, interactive platform. Um, and so for a while I was trying to do it that way. And then I was like, well, that's not cool because now I'm not checking in on my friends. And so then I started kind of falling back into the pitfall. And then I just was like, you know, I just need to just delete this from my phone. I'll just be better off without it. And so that's what I've done. I've deleted. The only thing that I have is Twitter. And Twitter is kind of nice because it's just not that exciting. Um, and that's what I do with, I do the same thing with my food. Um, we talked before on this podcast about like buying like dark chocolate. Like I don't, I love milk chocolate. If I had my way, I would eat a couple milk chocolate bars every day in my mm. life and, and a couple peanut butter cups or something like that. But I know that I love the flavor of that too much. And I know that, that I'll, I'll consume too much of that. And because I know that I'll consume too much of Instagram, it's just not on my phone anymore. And so luckily for me, I have people that can, uh, that can manage this and I still share a message with them on, you know, what I want posted and kind of how I want to be represented and things like that. But Unfortunately, I've had to ditch it because it just, uh, it puts my mind in places that I'd rather not be. I want to, I want to be focused in on, uh, the people that matter to me the most. I want to be present for the people that I love and the people that I care about. Um, and I want to be paying attention to that. Yeah. I, I don't want, you know, I don't want people to 
be by my grave when I when I pass on and be like, man, he was so sick at Instagram. <laughs> man, it could remember how good of a scroller he was? Man, he could scroll with the best of them. You know, I want to be known for other shit than just uh, stuff like that. So uh, for now, you know, and, and we talked about how everything should evolve. Your training should evolve. You're, you should evolve as a person. Uh, you should evolve, you know, with your nutrition. And for me, my evolution right now is, uh, you know, I don't have social media on my phone. Maybe I'll bring it back, um, but I don't have it for now. Yeah, I found that super useful. <laughs> like that shocks me. I, I didn't know that, like it affected you that much. And it, it and like, you look at too much porn while we're at it. <laughs> I figured I should bring that up. I saw, you know, I, I went, I thought I picked up my phone and it was yours and the BBC was on there and mm -hmm. one thing led to another. All right. Control yourself. Control yourself. Um. <laughs> <laughs> he, now he's, now he's thinking like, did he actually pick yeah. up my phone? Like, oh, I thought like, I had my password on there. My fingerprint. Now he's man. not sure. He's like, wait, yeah. whoops. I'm just going to keep playing this off. Oh, next subject uh <laughs> i had a butterfinger for the first time forever when you're talking about having uh peanut butter cups i had a butterfinger and that thing lit my face on fire it was stone, so good stone cold that's what he asked me about like he he, he asked all these <laughs> nutrition questions and he was like he was like super interactive with it he was super on board he's like all right i'm gonna cut back on you know on some of these foods and i'm gonna add in some of this and then he was like i got a question for you and i thought it was gonna be like something like you know, like what kind of fat should I eat or something? He's like, how do you cut back on butterfingers? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Steve, I'm like, I, I that's a great question. And I, I don't have the knowledge to, to be able to help you with that. <laughs> so good. I was like, those, those things are pretty damn good, but yeah. they do get all over the place though. I, you can't eat them in, in the car or I, watching a movie. Even you have chocolate no. all over you. It's where I don't care. It's worth it. They're so good. It's really crumbly. Yeah. Bart Simpson was a huge fan. Yeah. And I, and <laughs> I still main, love the Simpsons. So he was, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> he was like their main endorser. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I used to eat Snickers all the time. Snickers mm, is a good It's been so good long move. since I've had one. So, so, now, so now that we're talking about this, we have to have it because that's just the way that things work. But there, there's new Snickers bars out with almond butter. There's an almond butter one. So they have, they've had the almond oh ones for God. a long time. Oh, man. But then they made like peanut butter ones, which are really good. But now they made almond butter ones. I'm like, fake peanut butter is like one of the greatest inventions in the history of the world. And fake almond butter? That's probably really good. I'm starting to salivate. <laughs> it's not fair to other candy now. I know. Oh, my God. Snickers really oh is great. Oh, my gosh. You know, I think it's bullshit, though, when they moved to, like, the king size Snickers and they divided it up. Into two. That makes no sense. <laughs> oh, they killed you because then it, it's for, not the same size. It's not it's nearly like... as satisfying. And then it's also, um, it's split in two. It's, it's smaller. Yeah. Because like, there's a space there. Yeah. They did they that think, shit on purpose. They think we're stupid. They think we didn't notice <laughs> yeah. that. Uh -uh. Dude, we're not having that. Uh -uh. I, I, I don't know if they still make them, but they had Snickers like protein bars for a little while. They just, I remember that. They just basically like add a little pro, which is brilliant. That's great. Snickers and ice cream bars are actually really oh, good Oh, creamy almond butter. 69 cents. Yeah, that's a deal. Oh, well, that makes sense. What am I talking about? 200 calories? Oh, I could have like, you know, eight of those, only 1,600 calories. Not a problem. Still in a deficit of calories through the day. We're all switching to flexible. <laughs> <laughs> <We're> flexible <laughs> dieting today. I can, I can honestly see how that would fit into a program, yeah. Post, post workout. I like that he's trying to like, <laughs> yeah, post, okay. <laughs> this would be great post workout, right? It would be a great post workout snack. Isn't this the wrong thing to do talking about for this? <laughs> well, since one is almond butter you. bad, I don't understand. <laughs> Chocolate is considered so they have, not terrible. So they make one like that too, that's peanut butter too. So peanut butter and we got to, we got to compare flavors and stuff. Yeah. But wait, so like you, you mentioned fake peanut butter. Are you telling me that for all these years it's been fake peanut butter? Like, or it, am I tripping? It's like a, peanut butter convection or something like it's uh powdered or something like that yeah they can't release the information they'd have to kill everybody well wow. what we'll do is we'll just eat a bunch of these and when paul saladino's in town we'll just have him run our blood work or read our blood work and then so that way it, you know it's it's for the podcast it's, i got some it's for blood, science i got some blood work done recently and it was after it was after it was like right after i lifted in here mm -hmm. which you're not really supposed to do <laughs> and you're supposed to be fasted but I don't ever listen to the rules. I am always like, you know what? I get my blood work done frequently. I'm just going to get it done whatever way that I am. And for that particular day, I lifted. And then I had like a post-workout shake that had like some carbs in it. And 
my, <laughs> I can't even remember that. I should, I'll, I should bring in the numbers. They're like off the charts. Like it's like, looks so, it looks so, da- it looks so dangerous. <laughs> my like, gl- my glucose and everything is just like way off, but I had a, you know, a post-workout shake that had like a hundred grams of carbs in it or something yeah. like that. But it, it, it actually kind of made me think like, maybe these things that are pretty common in fitness, maybe they're not even like, maybe they're pretty bad for us, Mm. you know? And like, do we really know? Like, do we really know? Like we know, we know the information that we get, you know, and the information that we get a lot of times is from these like supplement companies, uh, or they're for people that have a vested interest in getting this information out. Um, and so it's like, you know, is this large amount of uh, sugary carbohydrates post-workout? Is it even, like how beneficial is it? And then do we even know like what it's actually doing to, it, you know, we all know that we're a little different mm-hmm. and what is it really doing to us? You bring up a really good point there. I just had a conversation with somebody like with a client with, about this yesterday because <clears throat> even my blood work, I think I got it done in November. Uh, my doctor was like, and I don't even take creatine like every day anymore. I take like maybe a few days a week because I forget a lot of the time. But he's like, oh, your creatinine levels are at a-, a Andrew. A, <laughs> I, I didn't even want to say <laughs> okay i'm just gonna keep going your creatinine Natty. levels are abnormally high <laughs> i'm like oh really um i also there's this there's and i've gotten this from multiple people that do their blood work that have you know they're they're more muscular than your average individual and they're not even taking creatine their doctor's like your creatinine levels are abnormally high you should probably make it. a doctor tried to tell one of my clients he's like oh you need to uh you need to definitely just uh, decrease the total amount of carbs you're eating. Just decrease it totally uh, and start going really, really high fat. And it's like just because his creatinine levels were a little bit high. And it's like he's healthy. You know, he's lifting every day. He's super active. But I think active individuals, especially if they do get their blood work done, there's going to be things that are abnormal than like the normal, I guess, healthy individual that mm-hmm. walks in and gets their blood work done. So that's something that needs to be paid attention yeah, the, to uh, that c-reactive protein which is supposed <clears> to be a marker of like uh, heart health heart inflammation um i could even be saying that wrong but it's supposed to be an indication of of your heart uh how healthy it is and there's um a few guys i think my brother had one of these guys on the podcast and he had his uh blood work done like 80 times in the last you know two years or whatever so he got a, you know a lot of blood work done and his C-reactive protein was like all over the place. Now, everybody thought that this was the marker for health. Everyone thought that this is a great place to start. It's not the only place, but it's one of the places to start when you're talking about like heart health. Well, his was, his was just, you know, such a wide array of, uh, of scores that he, that he got. Um, and he basically concluded that, look, it's going to look different on different days. And it matters a lot on how you trained the day before and even two days before. Um, and certainly even like the day of. And so, you know, when we're talking about healthier individuals or people that are exercising, uh, it would be great to gather more information yeah. on a lot of this stuff. And I was even, as I was, as I was, you know, checking out some of my own blood work and I have the cool thing about the bl- blood work when I get it is it shows my previous blood work and it's usually I usually make some small improvements uh, almost across the board and then something might kind of like be up and and then I've got to kind of figure that out and I'll move and shift that around. Um, But it's cool that it shows me like previous blood work. But what I was kind of thinking is like, man, how cool would it be if you can get a group of people to submit some of this information? I realize medical stuff can sometimes be sensitive to, you know, who the person is. So you'd have to figure out, you know, whether it be, uh, Maybe it'd be anonymous or, you know, but anyway, my point would be is like, how cool would it be to have a database of people that run, a database of mm-hmm. people that do jujitsu, a database of people that lift, database of people that do CrossFit, and to see all these different types of blood work and kind of see what some of the averages are. And then what are healthy things and what are, what are healthy magnesium levels and things like, I just don't think we even really know. Like some of these things were established, but they were established a long time ago. Um, I think our recommended daily allowance and stuff like that. I don't really know even where some of that came from. Mm -hmm. And, and I would imagine that, that all that stuff has been, most of that stuff is probably in alignment with monetization of (laughs) agriculture and stuff. So you need this amount of calcium. You need that. Of course they're going to say that because they want you to drink more milk and they, and it's just like, how do we really know? Like, but what are some things that are moving people forward that are actually really working? That's, 
that's what I would like to know more about. That yeah. database is an amazing idea if it could actually happen. Yeah, when you were um, talking about <clears throat> whether or not something is healthy for a normal individual versus like a, an athlete or you know whatever, it reminded me of <clears throat> when I was rolling around um, a lot of racetracks. Um, people would always be like, oh, this product says it's been tested on a racetrack, so it's definitely good enough for my street car. And then you know parts would be breaking all the time, people's tires falling off. It's like, well... Well, no, they're testing it on a track where it's perfectly smooth. There's no potholes. There's no curbs. Or, you know, there's nothing. It's just perfect. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering why your car's falling apart over here on the street. I'm like, no, but it's tested for the track. Like, well, no, it's for a track car. You know, so maybe a pre-workout is not meant for somebody going to the office in the morning, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then real quick, because she won't stop, Jessica Smith says that you're so fat and that you can't hide your face. I'm trying to. Uh, <laughs> she was probably talking to Encima. I think she was talking to me. She, <coughs> okay. says, she says that's me all the gotcha. time. Gotcha. That so. makes sense. And then Jesse Burdick says Sacramento. <laughs> With like five O's? Uh, I, I, you know, you know it wasn't me. It wasn't five O's. It was just More. a lot of exclamation points. Mm. Exclamation yeah. Points. But I didn't want to yell. You Man. can you can yell. It messes up the audio levels. It's your show, bro. I'll have to edit it later, though. No. <laughs> and I'll be extra work. <clears throat> Right, slightly. It'll make it too hard. Kind of back to uh, we got a little a little sidetracked, but a little bit. You know, I think there's the 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 point of a lot of the stuff that we we brought up today is that there's there's going to be some good and there's going to be some bad. There's going to be a little bit of yin, a little bit of yang to everything that you try to do. And uh, as we were pointing out earlier, you know, you don't want to kick yourself when you're down. You know, it's we we do we are striving to be better. Um, but at the same time, we always, it's, it's always a good idea to be accepting of the fact that you're probably going to lead yourself down the wrong path many times over. Um, you're probably going to talk yourself into the fact that you're too tired, uh, that you're more fatigued than you really are. Uh, you're probably going to, you know, talk yourself into saying, uh, negative things, you know, some negative self-talk, but we want to try to reinforce the positive as much as we can. And we want to try to develop a lot of healthy dialogue for ourselves so we can develop good habits. These habits will be things that you can rely upon in your worst, darkest times when things aren't going your way, when things are sliding downhill, when you wake up and it's rainy and stormy outside and you don't feel like going outside. That's when those good habits, you'll just think, okay, well, I'll just, I'll throw on a hoodie and I'll go to my car and I'll go to the gym or I'll grab an umbrella and still go for my walk. Like th these are, these are the things that you're going to be able to rely upon. These are things that end up becoming, they become ingrained into your system and it ends up being part of your character. And really, I think that's my goal. And I think that's the goal for all of us on this podcast is I, I would like for when people like hang out with you when people do something uh, with you where they go, damn, like this guy has got it how does he have it all together? Like, I understand, I understand. Okay. He's, he's Jack. That's, that's cool. But maybe I make more money. Oh no, he does pretty good there too. Um, let's see. Well, I have a girlfriend and oh wait, so does he, right? Like you want to kind of like have it to where you, you know, you're like pretty buttoned up. You're like, I, I don't know where can I get this guy? I guess in Nsema's case, he can say, at least I could choke this motherfucker out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I could probably make this guy tap, right? Yeah. So if if all else fails, just beat the shit out of somebody. That's, that's <laughs> all you need in this world, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then don't aim too low, right? Like don't, like some kid out of high school, like, <laughs> you piece of shit, I'm way better than you. Because <laughs> then you're just setting yourself up for something worse. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually heard, uh, it's a great quote where, where the guy says, um, he says, most people don't, uh, most people aim aim too low and hit rather than aim too high and miss. So it's like, that's, but I think a lot of times, a lot of times we, we're so worried about, you know, how hard something might be, we might not even really try. Yeah. Might not even like set forth towards that motion right mm. that's literally you know what's funny that's literally something <laughs> it may sound weird but whenever uh, i i maybe i'm working with someone who's never tracked their calories before and they've never paid attention to their food i always say understand i'm telling you this like knowing that you will fail a lot i'm letting you know this now you will for you will fuck up a lot for months and months on end it's okay just 
go again the next day, you know, because people like you go into something thinking that it's going to go great <laughs> all the time and it's not going to be that way. And if you can realize that it's going to be horrible a lot mm -hmm. and you're just going to get better and better a little bit at a time, then it, it you'll, you'll probably get to the end of it. You'll probably get to that goal. But if you think it's going to be peachy and, and, it, and it's not, you're going to quit. <laughs> yeah. Anybody that you've worked with have, have you noticed like they've been kind of almost afraid to succeed? Ye afraid to succeed you know almost like uh hey, hey and see my like i, I want to i want you to help me out but like don't tell anybody K kind of i think more so it would be it, it'd be the word be afraid to fail because and those those are like i honestly those are the two i think those are two sides of the same coin because mm -hmm. if you're afraid to fail and you're afraid to mess up consistently you're not going to succeed so in essence you are afraid of succeeding mm -hmm. you know cuz i can't think of i can't think of anything that takes work that doesn't also have a just a disgusting amount of pitfalls and failures you know yeah. but so mm -hmm. you just be okay. Don't, it's hard to say to be okay with that, but prepare yourself for that. Understand that it's going to happen and it's almost unavoidable. But with all the times that you actually do mess up, that you don't track your macros the right way, or you, you mess up on your diet on a certain day, you'll learn from that experience and then you'll, you know, we'll just continue to chug along. Yeah. There's a, you know, as I'm pointing out, there's, there's a good and bad to everything. And for some reason, self-sabotage is ingrained into the human condition. I, I don't know why. It just is. We're all going to deceive. We're all going to cheat. We're all going to lie. Like lying is, I, I don't know where it starts. I don't, I don't even know if it's a learned behavior, but you ask a kid who's got a, a bright red pen, hey, did you write on the wall? And there's red writing all over the wall. And they say no. You know, I don't know if that's just uh, a, a, a flat out lie or if that's a protective way of trying to look a certain way in somebody else's eyes. But either way, we're going to try to like deceive and cheat as much as, as much as we can at every turn. And I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what it is, but, but it's there. And, uh, something I, I've been, I've been listening to lately, lately where this guy was talking about, you know, if you're, um, if you owe a bunch of creditors money, you don't announce to them that you're leaving town. <laughs> You just leave without any notice and you just go. And, and I, that's something I, I've actually done that all my life, not owed people money, but I, I've, uh, I've always just kind of left. I always just like leave, like when I, family situations and we, we were hanging out the other day and, uh, we were watching some, uh, watching the Oscars and my sister-in-law had some friends over and I, I ended up, uh, just I ended up coming to the gym and then I ended up getting, um, I ended up getting over there through, uh, Jessica and then I went on a walk and I just Ubered home <laughs> and it's like, that might seem so weird. My wife is so used to that at, at, at this stage to where, you know, and everybody I think just understands, like, I just go to the beat of my own drum. I just kind of end up doing some stuff that's just a little bit, a little bit different. Um, but I kind of feel like I, I need to, um, but anyway, kind of the, the point is, is like you, you want to just like do, you don't want to, um, you don't want to, uh, like aim and then wait and then shoot. You want to aim and shoot almost simultaneously. You want to have the action because if you, if you wake up in the morning and you're like, man, it's really snowing out really bad. Should I go to the gym? The answer is no, you shouldn't. You should get back in the covers, man. And you should, you know, you should, uh, you know, snuggle with your girlfriend or whatever and, and wake up two hours later and eat some pancakes. You know, um, that's going to be the answer, right? You're going to, you're going to kind of talk yourself out of it. And I think, you know, an important thing to just kind of always understand is there's always going to be, there's always going to be that friction. And if you just decide and act almost at the same time, it's hard. Because how do you do it? Um, how do you, how do you all of a sudden know how to do um, a certain hold in jujitsu? It's 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 not because you don't know how to do it because you practice it so many times it's ingrained into your body. That that's actually kind of some it, it, you partially do, but what actually really happens is you recognize you're the only one in the room that doesn't know how to do it, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it starts to really sink in. You're like, this guy's gotten me in this lock for the last four weeks in a row. 
and you're frustrated. You might even like cry over stuff like this. Like sometimes this stuff matters to us a lot and you get, get like emotional. You're super frustrated. You're like then all of a sudden you're rolling with somebody and it happens and you're like, whoa, <laughs> where did that come from? And it's the same thing with when you're a kid and, and you're the only kid that can't swim. Now all of a sudden you're swimming. It wasn't because the instructor just kept showing you and showing you and showing you and showing you. A lot of times that's not when it clicks. It clicks out of like scarcity. You get scared that you, you're the only one that doesn't, uh, doesn't understand how to do this. So, you know, as you're trying to develop these habits, realize that you can write these things down and you can plan them out and you can do all these things, but you have to act on them. You have to act on them and you have to play tricks on yourself to get them to actually happen. Part of the reason why I get here at four in the morning is because by 4.30, I'm already 30 minutes into a workout. I like tricked myself into doing it. Now I love fitness and I love to train. So training doesn't really matter that much. But like when it comes to like running and doing like cardio stuff, I hate to, I don't like doing it, but I've been tricking myself into doing it. So make sure that you're, you know, you're trying to aim and shoot kind of, uh, at the same time. I mean, shoot at the same time. I like that. You know, uh, <laughs> There's a, uh, Andrew, I told you about the book, The Five Second Rule. Yeah. yeah told, oh, yeah, I told yeah. you about it, too. That, yeah, it's, uh, uh, what is her name? Uh, Mel Robbins? Robbins. Mel Robbins. Mel Robbins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, yeah she's great. That's like, it's a, it's a legit concept that you were just talking about. Yeah. You know, if, if uh, same example, you're in bed, you know, you wake up and you start thinking too much, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, I should go. I should, you'll probably not go. Mm -hmm. But if you get up and you legit just like step on the floor and start walking, you're you're gonna go if like if you can if there's a juggernaut yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly juggernaut. if and, and I, we'll I, come back to that i have to tell everybody what happened i'm so go curious yeah but but like that that has been something that has helped me out so much i mean it's not like i'm perfect with it all the time i will sometimes catch myself in my head but i've found that like if i can just like just go and just like not think and just like just go and do the things i got to do without thinking about it mm -hmm. things are so much easier yeah. To just get done and do, you know, and and that, that in itself becomes a habit. Just doing things becomes a habit if you can, mm -hmm. if you can build that. So, yeah. Or even just kind of like, not, I don't want to say set the bar too low, but like, uh, I'm just going to go to the gym and I'm going to walk on the treadmill and just get warmed up and then move around a little bit, stretch out. And then before and that's you, an excellent point, that's an excellent trick is like convince yourself yeah. that it's not going to be that bad. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, it's going to get horrible. <laughs> Like, yeah. I mean, you know, deep down inside, it's going to, at some point, someone else will trick you into doing more work or mm -hmm. you'll trick yourself into doing more, but just get yourself there. Yeah. It happened to me on Saturday. I just said, I was right, going to go in real quick, just get like a bicep pump, try to at least, and then like uh, work my back and then get out of here. Mm -hmm. And then, um, oh, what are their names? Those The two guys that you just recently hired, uh, Jay and damn it. Uh, Tom. Tom. They're just like, hey, man, is it cool if we work in with you? And next thing I know, we just had a sick workout. Just getting at it. Yeah, it was dope. And that's exactly what happened. I was like, the uh, bar is going to be set here. Got there and ended up just having an awesome workout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But <laughs> real quick, so we had a, uh, a quick photo shoot set up uh, for Mark, and I th it was uh, when Charity Witt was here. Oh. And it was just before Mark was going to uh, Bodega Bay to have his dopamine fast. And it was like, we had everything set up. Uh, it was just, we just like, okay, we got to grab Mark. And then like, like, that's it. Like, let's, we, 10 seconds. I got pulled into a bunch of stuff too. I think before we, we did a podcast too, right? Yeah. I think that same of course. Day. And, uh, they already kind of asked a bunch more of me than was scheduled. <laughs> and, uh, Fair. yeah, the pod, podcast got over with and. Yeah. So again, it's not like Mark wasn't doing anything. So I'm definitely not saying he was lazy or anything like that, but it it was probably my favorite thing that's happened at this gym, at this location. Like so much so that I text Mark right after it happened. And I was like, you know, the, told him exactly what I just said. But uh, like as Mark's leaving, he's like, Hey guys, I got to like, see you guys later. They're like, no, 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 Mark, we need, we need 10 seconds of your time. We got to get this one shot. And he's like, Nope. You can't stop me. I got momentum. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a juggernaut. And he just left the building and everyone was just like dumbfounded. And I am on the floor laughing because I'm like, they're like, did he really leave? Andrew's like, yep. I was like, he's gone. Like, what do you mean? I'm like that. And I text him right away. I'm like, that's my favorite thing that's happened here. 
and he just responded there's a time and a place for everything <laughs> no, it's it's so funny that you mentioned that like just walk it away because I, i've seen you do that before I'd just be like oh he's just cool <laughs> it's just like I he think, just does that he's shit. a joke or not i think everybody I think, I think everyone thinks i'm just like absent-minded that i just randomly like stop like i just shut down my brain shuts down and i just walk away yeah so we're, we're, <laughs> i'm like <laughs> Something happens in my head. There's like an alarm that goes off. Like I need to get out of here. Yeah. So we got to like get a, like sort of fire. You know. We got to design a shirt of Mark and like the the juggernaut like helmet. Just like, <laughs> Honestly, I got momentum. You can't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where that came from. Oh man, God. too much fun. And sometimes you got to go to the beat of your own drum, right? <laughs> yep. Nice. Uh, All right, man. Well, we're gonna be at booth uh, nine forty five at the Arnold. Uh, hope to uh, hope to see a lot of you people there. What are some of your favorite things that happen going to these shows? I shook Arnold's hand last year. Oh damn! Um, yeah, yeah, I got a picture of it too. I might look like a kid. I'm just like, <laughs> so so yeah, that was pretty awesome. Hopefully, uh, I'll be able to catch him again this year. Be Do nice. you end up running into clients and stuff too? And yeah, I got one guy. Actually, I think I have two guys that live in Ohio. <clears throat> are they know. anybody competing? Uh, no, nobody's competing in a, uh, at at that at that meet. <clears throat> but um. There is a cool uh, grappling X Jiu Jitsu tournament going on. If I go to the Arnold again next year, I think I might want to do that. But uh, is it pretty high level? Those tournaments they run really well. So, like, I mean, if it's you know, if you run into a blue belt competitor, there'll be a blue belt. But they, you know, they have white belts to black belts at mm -hmm. that tournament. And I think uh, it'll be it'll be interesting because I mean, if Arnold's going to be there, who knows when he's going to start potentially doing stuff with uh, with that tournament? But I do want to check that out. I'm excited for the weekend in general. Strongman and all of that. It's going to be exciting. It's always exciting. Yeah. yeah. Brian Shaw, Hapthor. And I would imagine at this stage, you know, they're, it, Strongman is so competitive. I wouldn't be surprised to see your third or fourth place guy from last year, mm. you know, really give everybody a nice run for their money too. Because these guys are, they're just, they're just always getting better, man. And yeah. you don't know, yeah. you don't know who's going to do what. And uh, there's some young guys I I in the field. I mean, Hapthor is pretty young too, but there's some young guys in the field that uh, can be highly competitive. So I I'm excited for it. I, mm -hmm. I love watching Brian compete, like to see him get fired up and to see, uh, to see how good he's gotten over the years. Like he's better than he, he's better than he's ever been, which is crazy. And then to watch him repeatedly, you know, he comes in second often to Hapthor is crazy because mm -hmm. you're like, this is a four time world's strongest man. <laughs> he should not be coming in second. Yeah. But Hapthor has upped his game so much and he's young and he's hungry. And so I think it would be an amazing story. If Brian can figure out a way uh, to, uh, to get past him at some point, that would be amazing. But just to watch both these, both these guys continue to elevate their game every year, they're deadlifting more weight mm -hmm. every year. They're doing more. And it's like, how the hell are they doing it? Because <laughs> they're already like, deadlifting like a thousand fifty yeah i wonder if there's ever has there ever been a time especially in that sport where they're like the top two have been so neck and neck because you see this rarely i don't really think it i don't think you've really seen this before i think sadruna savickas and and brian went back and forth a little bit um but that was about it i can't marius pujanowski was really dominant and strongman at that time had had two separate uh had two separate main leagues so uh, some of that is just skewed a little bit because some of the other competitors were in a different league. Um, and then you had, uh, you know, you had a lot of dominance from the uh, Europeans and it, it just really haven't seen the back and forth like this uh, with these with these guys. And Brian, you know, Brian had a good run and then it's mainly been Hapthor kind of more recently. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it'll be amazing to see, you know, and then Eddie Hall was kind of in there for, for a minute, but he's retired um, I don't know if he's competing at the Arnold. I think he's, I think he's pretty much retired. So I don't think we'll see him. Oh, that's right. He's not doing Arnold. He's not doing world's strongest man, but he still competes in strong man. Just those are so heavy and so crazy <clears throat> that he was like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm biased because I've hung out with Shaw quite a bit now, but there's nothing like hearing an entire expo chanting USA. Yeah. You, it's, oh, dude, you get the chills every time. And it's, it's, uh, so I'm looking forward to that for sure. Yeah, I want to see Shaw too. It's, it's so intense. And then, like last year, you know, Brian pulled like 1,030 and then Hapthor did like 1,050 mm -hmm. or something. I was right next to, 
uh, Thor's uh, trainers and coaches and stuff, and and they know who I am. And I'm sitting with Carrie. I'm sitting with Brian's uh, wife, and um, just nothing but respect, though. Mm-hmm. Like they're everyone's cool. Like I, I high five them. You know, I was like that was that was sick. Like that was awesome. And there's no like uh, weird uh, animosity. Hap Thor's a good dude too, mm-hmm. really a good competitor and a great champion. And I I just want to see these guys slug it out again. And I'm uh, on Team Shaw, obviously too. Mm-hmm. I, I hope that he, uh, I hope that he can pull one more out. Both former guests of the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. <laughs>